Good afternoon from Hoplon Hollow. It looks like some of our peas, our sweet peas, are ready to replant into large pots. Here I've got some nice twin pots, decent size, I guess about 12, 14 inches across, and fairly deep, at least 12 inches deep. And I'm going to put some of the sweet peas in these pots. Um, with walking stick willow trellises for them to climb. And I think these will make a nice presentation somewhere in the yard or maybe along the front porch. I'm not thrilled with the small size of that drainage hole right there. But I don't want it to get blocked up with soil, so a couple of blocks here in the bottom will help. Uh, landscaping fabric. The water can go through, but the soil won't come through. My trellises, I'm going to use my walking stick willow, which I've just cut off some nice long pieces off the walking stick willow. What I love about it is the way it twists and curls and, and carries on, and it's just a, a wild and crazy looking tree. And there's a couple of advantages in using this tree. I use this for willow fences, woven fences, all sorts of things. I'm going to strip off all the leaves, and then I'll show you how I'm going to make this trellis. So have so many branches, little side branches. This is going to really benefit my peas. I'm going to put, like I said, three in each pot, tie them together at the top, put in the peas, and then weave around the teepee with all these extra little stems and branches. Now I'm ready to put some of my sweet peas in. This is burgundy, burgundy sweet pea. I think I got this from Eden Brothers. I'm going to split it up so that I have two pea plants in each hole. These two plants have branched out quite a bit. I will put these in one hole right down here next to the thick stem, the thick branch of the, um, whoops, another little one. the side branches and wrapping them round and round and round the pyramid. This gives the peas something to hold on to and climb as they go all the way to the top. And it's kind of a gnarly, wild, crazy look, but I love that. And there's another advantage, for me at least, for putting, using the walking stick willow. Because I use this a lot to make all my woven fences. The advantage is that in order to increase my tree production, as these are sitting here supporting the trees, they are actually growing roots and making new walking willows. So I've got a couple here that are ready to put in the ground. They've developed some nice roots. This is from another project. And this gives me a good supply of willow for all those projects that I like to uh, use them for figure out where I want to put these. I 
think they're really, really interesting. Hello, Tessie. I know one thing, I've got to keep them away from the peacocks. That's going to be tricky because they love to eat peas. I mean, they love to eat pea leaves and shoots. So I'm kind of limited as to where I could place these pots. I wanted to show you these baskets because I love baskets anyway. The baskets in the garden just rot. These are realistic looking baskets that are actually made of either it's vinyl or some sort of plastic. But they look really great. And they came in a set of two. So here's another one over here. They're fantastic. And I got these at Walmart. I can't remember how much I paid for them. They were not inexpensive, but these are great because they'll just last as long as plastic will in the garden. And I put inside of them plastic pots. So I planted inside the plastic pots a couple more tomato plants because we're running out of room in the raised bed. I'm going to use just about every bit of space that I have in this poget because there's just so many places here that you can plant. So along the fence here would be great for cucumbers. But it's also got climbing roses along the fence here. But I've got all this extra space. All I have to do is dig up some of these violets and maybe pull up some of that seed up and I can get the rest of my tomato plants and my peppers in and some squash to go along the fence. So a fenced in potager is a fantastic because you can use all of your props, basically, your garden bones, which would be in this case the fence, to plant and to um, get your vines, your tomatoes, your cucumbers, your squash, your peas, your beans, and I'll climb up your fence. So you're using the outside perimeter of your potager as well as the interior. Now I've had these rhubarb roots in a bucket for about three weeks. In fact, when I first got them they didn't even have leaves on them but now they are ready to go into the ground and they need to go in badly but I haven't been able to think of where to put them because rhubarb is a perennial that gets pretty large and you'll have it around for a very very long time so I thought to put it underneath this dwarf plum tree and I did my research and found that I can put rhubarb under a fruit tree without harming either one, but as you can see, it's pa jam-packed in here, full of sedum and violets. That's no problem. I'm going to dig up all the violets and the sedum. I'll move the sedum to another garden. The violets, I can just toss those because violets here are a dime a dozen. And then I'll have lots of space for the rhubarb. And it'll be right next to a great big other plant, which is a comfrey and some rosemary over there. So I think now we have a little bit of room for the rhubarb. As I said, I've never had really an affinity for rhubarb, except for one thing. I remember rhubarb as a child in this way. When I was about five or six years old, we had a neighbor with a vegetable garden and a huge rhubarb plant, which grew along the fence between our house and theirs. It was a picket fence with wide spaces in between the pickets wide enough for me to stretch my arm through the fence, grab a stick of rhubarb, break it off, take it through, and eat it for all day long with some salt on it. That was my experience with rhubarb. <laughs> but it sort of reminds me of those days, back in those days, when I was very, very young. And I think now, after all these years of having my potager, I think this would be a lovely addition to the garden. And why not learn a lot of new recipes for rhubarb? Rhubarb pie, rhubarb jelly, rhubarb and maybe plum. Rhubarb and plum jelly with the plums that come off this beautiful little dwarf plum tree. So we'll see. These two will get along well together, these three, these two rhubarbs and this plum tree. I think they'll be a lovely combination right here in their own little corner. So someone asked me about the fertilizer, if I fertilize plants when I put them in, and yes, I do. I am using a fish fertilizer. I use one tablespoon in a gallon of water. This watering can holds two gallons, and so I just fill it up two tablespoons, actually two capfuls, and give each plant a drink of that fertilizer as I put it in the ground. In the background, that motor running, that is the sound of a happy man. 
That's my husband on his new lawnmower because we really, he really, really needed one. His mower has been going down the tubes for three years and he finally got a really good one. And we need it because he has to mow about three acres of grass. Now over here, I'm in the potager again, but I'm doing a little redecorating. So these are the, this is the old wash tub and it was full of bulbs. Both of the tubs looked like this. This one, I just emptied it out. The whole thing, they've already bloomed, they're turning yellow, they're very unattractive, and it just looks like a mess. So I took the whole shebang, I'm taking the whole shebang, soil and all, and I'm going, and I'm going to go drop all of this in a woodland garden and let it grow there next year. And this, I have need of some more space to put in some green peppers, and I'm just, I've just run out of space loading this with compost and peat. I'm out of vermiculite and I can't seem to find any in the store anymore, which is very troubling. But I'm going to go ahead and plant the rest of the green peppers in here. And yeah, I think that should take care of all the vegetables that I wanted to put in at this time. Think every bit of space that you can in your potager. I also planted right along a fence, as I recommended that you do. If you have a fence, use it. So we've got some golden squashes growing along there. They're going to grow right alongside these beautiful climbing roses. And the tomatoes too. You can plant tomatoes and roses in a potager. You can mix your herbs and your flowers and your ornamentals and your roses and your fruit trees. You can mix them all in a potager. Now my potagers are more traditional in the fact that they are rather wild and cottage-like, but there are also potagers which are potageries, very formal and very beautiful too. And whatever is your choice, that is fine. I'm excited about that rhubarb. I think it's gonna be a really fast grower. And if I keep it healthy, I'll have it for years and years and years. What a happy garden this is, I'm telling you. This is a happy jumble of plants. And as I always say about my gardens, my gardens are harmonious confusion. And as a commenter recently said on one of my posts, that my garden was a hot mess. She meant it as an insult, but that's okay. To each his own. Everyone has their own gardening style, and this just happens to be mine. So whatever your gardening style is, you enjoy it, and don't think about what anyone else um, says about your garden. It's your garden. And you're the one that puts all the work into it. So from Hopalong Hollow, we will once again have a short walkabout in the videos probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. But this is one of the longer ones that some of you like. So ah, see you next time on Hopalong Hollow. Mix all your dry ingredients together. liquid ingredients
often make cake. I'm really more of a pie person, but this is probably the most delicious cake ever. It's moist. It's just a standard uh, carrot cake recipe with cream cheese frosting, but in place of walnuts or raisins, I used dried cranberries. This is moist. It's delicious. We I made this for a luncheon that we had, and this was the last piece, so it went pretty quickly. It's really delicious. Today's tea is Tea de l'eau by Palais de Tea, and this is French tea. This is actually another Earl Grey. I love Earl Grey, so I wanted to try this one. It's a black tea with bergamot. This is probably one of the richest, most luxurious Earl Grey teas I've ever tasted, so... For an Earl Grey tea, this French Grey tea by Pelé de Thé is really, really good with your luxurious carrot cake. Disheveled because I didn't have a frosting bag, so I had to use a baggie to squeeze the little carrots out. And then I took some lemon balm from the garden, but uh, it was kind of a quick job. But that cream cheese dressing is to die for. And so, every once in a while, treat yourself to a delicious piece of rich carrot cake and some lovely French Earl Grey tea.